Hello, and welcome to the Dell EMC PowerServe video for agentless import. In this video, we will go over an overview of the native agentless import feature, then provide a demo of importing a block storage resource from an XMIO system and end with additional resources. Initially, host clients might have their data for their applications in an existing Dell EMC storage system and will want to move the application data to PowerStore. The PowerStore native import feature can be leveraged to migrate data to PowerStore. The main components in order to accomplish this import are, you have to have obviously your Dell EMC source system that may require a software upgrade. In this video, we'll use an XGMIO cluster as an example. And second, you have the PowerStore cluster with one or more appliances. In the PowerStore, it has a native software called Orchestrator. It's the one that manages the end-to-end -end workflow for the import. Think of it as the brain for the whole progress. The front-end connectivity for the import can be either iSCSI or fabric channel, but we must keep in mind that the protocol must match between the source system and the destination power source system. For the backend connectivity, iSCSI will be leveraged to transmit the data between the two storage systems. So we have talked about a bit of an overview. Now let's go in a little bit more detail into what the progress entails. For the setup phase, if we are leveraging Fiber Channel for the front end, FC Sony might be required. Also, Keep in mind that the ISCOC connectivity between the source system and the power store will, will be potentially be a new component. With agentless import, we need to add the hosts that are mapped to the source resources that we want to migrate. Notice that there's no host plugin required. For the second step, as part of the import, once those hosts are added, the source system can be added to the power store. Then the import workflow can be followed, which will include the selection of the source resources to import. Once those, those resources are selected, an import session will create it once we click import. Once that session that gets created is ready to enable destination volume, we can select the enable destination volume button, which starts the disruption process of the import. Once the session is ready to start copy, we can bring back online the application and click start copy, which will start back on copy from the source system. Once the data from the source system is in sync with PowerServe, we have the option to cut over. Once the session is ready to cut over, Keep in mind that we cannot go back once we do cut over. So that's a bit of the overview. Now let's go into a demo. First, we navigate to the source XGMIO cluster and confirm that there's a workload running. Then we see two volumes that are mapped to our host. We navigate to the host and see the workload that we have running and confirm that the two volumes are added as disk. And then we navigate to the destination power store cluster and navigate to the import external storage page. To add the source system as a remote system, we click the add remote system button, which opens the add remote system side panel, in which we select the type as extreme IO and provide the management IP address, the ISCC IP address, and the username and password and then click add. Then we confirm the certificate and select the fetch volumes action. Then we see a table in which the XGMIO source system has been added. Now we will import the volume by selecting the system that we just added and click import storage, which opens a wizard. The first step provides an overview of the two types of import, the non-disruptive one which requires a host plugin and the agentless one. We will be leveraging the agentless one for this video. We go ahead and click next. We see the two volumes that we saw in the host, which are ready to be imported. We select one of them and click next. At this time, we won't add them to a volume group, so we click next. We want to make sure to map the host. 
So we select it and click next. We keep the session to begin immediately and we will cut over the session manually so we do not check the automatic cut over and click next. At this time, we won't select a protection policy for the resource, so we click next. We review the different options that we have selected and click import. We can see that a new import session gets created. We refresh the table and expand the state column to see the current state of the import session. With this, a new volume gets created. So we go in and see that the state is importing and then we go back to the import page to monitor the process. Once the import session is ready to enable destination volume, we we'll click more actions and click the enable destination volume action. A pop-up is shown requesting to confirm that the host application in the source is brought up offline. So we go back to the host and stop the workload that we were running. Then go back to the system, check box the first option, and then we keep the second option as the recommended one in which we allow the system to automatically remap the host. Keep in mind while we do have the option to manually remap. Then we proceed and click Enable Destination Volume. Once the session is ready to start a copy, we select it and click Start Copy Action. A pop-up is shown to bring the application back online. So we navigate back to the host, we click a quick rescan and bring the disk back online. And we restart the workload. Once the workload is running, we go back to the PowerSer Manager, click the confirmation, and click Start Copy. At this time, the session will go into a copy in progress state. So we keep monitoring the progress. So we refresh the table, and we can see that it continues. Additionally, we can view the different events. So we navigate to the monitoring page and click the Events tab to see the entries for each action that we have taken. As well for each action, we can see a job that was executed. So we go back to the import jobs page to continue monitoring the process. If we click the copy in progress again, we can see a little bit more details, including estimated completion time, current transfer rate, and average transfer rate. As we continue to monitor the progress, we can go back and click refresh and see that the state is ready to cut over. So at this time, we select the session and click the cut over action. We see a quick pop-up describing of what is going to happen and that we cannot roll back after we take this action. We go ahead and continue cut over. Now we click the new volume that got created and confirm that the workload is still running on it and that the host mappings were automatically created. We can also monitor the workload at the cluster level. Finally, we confirm that the mapping in the stream IO were automatically removed and this concludes the demo. For additional resources, see the dell.com storage resources site for all of the videos and technical white papers as well, navigate to the PowerStore Info Hub. Thank you for viewing this PowerStore video.